Section B is problem solving, um, which is basically algorithms. So this is the section that most people usually kill it and you get like 50 out of 50 because the algorithms aren't that hard to do and they kind of repeat themselves a bit. Let's go with the basic. What is an algorithm? Uh, define a solution to a problem. All right, so if you have a set of instructions that solves a problem, cool. Um, name three basic control structures used in programming. All right, sequence, selection, sequence, sequence, selection, or um, loop, loop slash iteration slash repetition. Any one of the, well, any one of those will count for the loops, but selection and sequence are usually straightforward. All right, the algorithm below is designed to generate, print, and count the odd numbers between 1 inclusive to 99 inclusive. However, there are errors. What are the final values in the variables C and J when the algorithm terminates? What we're trying to do here is a little tree stable. So let's see if we can do a tree stable quit. We have a J and we have a C. Do we have any other variables? No, it's just J and C, right? So for a trace table, always start by listing the variables. So j is equal to 2, c is equal to 1. That is this line, these two lines here. And then while j is less than 99, is j less than 99? Yes, it is. So therefore, we go into the loop. j is equal to j plus 2. So j becomes 4. And c is equal to c plus 1. c becomes 2. And we can't trace through everything because this thing go into 99. So we just had to basically follow the pattern and kind of figure out what will happen when we actually get to the last number and because we know it going to go two four six eight our last number that we'll have to check is 98 so when we add 98 c would have or c would have reached to 49 you're basically multiplying whatever you have inside this will be one multiplied by two will give you two two multiplied by two will give you four so 49 divided by two will give you 98 so once you reach any 98 what happens is that the ny will now go back up and check to see if you are less than 98 and it will say yes if you are less than 99 and I say, yes, I am less than 99, so it will reach the 100, and then you see it will reach the 50, and then the while loop will now have to stop because J is no longer less than 99, and therefore we'll print C is, C is equal to 50, and J is equal to 100. All right, so that'll be the final value when it terminate for C and J. So you get one mark for getting the C, and you get one mark for getting the G. Common mistake here will be that sometimes people will put the C as 50 when it reaches the 98, which is algorithmic, algorithmical sound. All right, by referring, by referring to specific line, line numbers, identify and correct the errors in the algorithm. All right, so the goal here is to find the odd numbers between 1 to 99 inclusive. So if we want to find the odd numbers, the first thing that we're going to have to change is we're going to have to change the value of G to start at 1. So we'll change this to G is equal to 1. So that we'll start off by having the odd numbers only each time. C will start off at 1 also. Yeah, that's not a problem. C can start off at 1. If it has to be inclusive, then you have to say while J is less than or equal to 99, that will make sure that the um that the 99 is included in the calculation. So that will solve that. Using the corrected algorithm, get the value of the variable C at the end of the execution. 51 is the answer. Because the C will get to add one more time before the loop will stop. Because all happen is that the J is equal to J plus 2 will end up reaching 101. And then the C is going to go up by 1 to reach 51. And then it will, the loop will stop. All right, so we are draw a flowchart for this guy here now. So the flowchart for this is begin, which will be a start, then a read, then a read name. And then if, if name is equal to end the data, if the answer is yes print no data supplied and if the answer is no which is the else part now we go on to a diagram for a while a diamond for a while while name is not equal to n data if the answer is yes what do we do we read an amount read amount is a parallelogram and then we read quantity actually you can read both of them in the same place that will save you the trouble read amount and quantity and then we have sale is equal to amount by quantity which is a rectangle sale is equal to amount multiplied by quantity and from there we will print this sale well sale and then we have to read the name again 
and then all of this will be back up to our guy right here while name is not equal to end data and if the answer is no then you're just gonna meet the stop photo let me turn stop there yeah that's it there all right Philo is a grocery management has decided need to track all the goods that are sold on a daily basis by using a computer based solution discuss what the identifying and evaluating possible solutions to the problem would involve for bylaw Ooh, i remember this question all right they need to track all the goods that are sold daily they are grocery cool so identifying and evaluating possible solutions for them from a computer-based problem solving process is going to be i'll break it up into two parts right so this is part a so the identifying which will be get all the inputs and expected outputs of the system right because you have to identify the possible solutions that they could go and and propose multiple solution right then the evaluate now would be evaluate to be checked to see which solution would solve the problem most efficiently so let's see how the marks will come inside here right so when you identify any possible solutions they are to get all the inputs then you have to get the expected outputs because if you don't know that then you can't come up with a solution and then you have to propose the solutions that you're going to try and then you check to see so now you have to check which is compare which solution will solve the problem and because it's a grocery you had them use some sort of term to you know sell what a grocery needs to do a grocery needs to be very efficient because they're dealing with um products and money trace through the following algorithm the output should be what is generated all right print spaces print end spaces from the current cursor position use a dash to indicate a space print continues output on the current line print line continues output on the current line from the current cursor position but any subsequent things begin on the next line so that basically means this here will print something on the line and then go down to the next space right that's what print line means as usually the hardest part in this question. All right, so size is 10, print spaces, size. So we put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, because our dash represents a space. And then we're gonna print line our star, so we have to put the star, and the next output goes here. Then we change in J is equal to size minus two. So now J becomes eight, because it's 10 minus two. Because J is eight, we're now checking to see while j is greater than zero. Is j greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we begin. Print spaces j plus one. So j is eight, so we print in spaces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces. When we reach our nine space, then we print in our star, because it says print our star, but that's on one line. And then print spaces eight minus j. Eight minus j is, j is now eight, so 8 minus j is 0. So we're not printing anything. All right, good. Yeah. So this here is going to result to 8 minus 8 on the first run. So that's 0. So we're not printing any spaces. And then we print line and a, um, a star. So we print any star. And the next thing is going to happen here. All right. So now, the, so now the loop is going to go back up. And now we're going to say while j is greater than 0. Is j greater than 0? Yes, it is. Because on this j is equal to j minus 1. j end up changing to... This end up changing j to 7. So j is greater than um sorry great j is now seven yes so it's still greater than zero so we're going to print spaces j plus one which is eight spaces one two three four five six seven eight then our instruction is print our star so we print the star and then the instruction is eight minus j but now it's no longer eight is eight minus seven so the spaces will be one so i have to print one space and then follow the instruction print line which is put our star and then the next thing that happens will be on that line there loop goes back up again while j is greater than zero, is j greater than zero? Yes, because the last thing that happened, j changed from seven to six now. And we repeat this process. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We put a star, and then we're going to have eight minus six, which will give me two spaces to put, two spaces. And then I have a printer next star, which is a star. And then j goes down to five. And I do the same thing. You know the pattern by now, 3, 4, 5, plus 1, which would be 6. I put a star, then I put spaces, then I put the next star. J goes down to 4, so I go to 4 plus 1, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I print a star, space, 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 star. And then J goes down to 3, I space, 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 space. 
plus two plus one is four. Dash, 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 dash. Uh, J goes down to two. Space, space, space. Because two plus one is three. Star. Dash, 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 dash. Like that. And then two goes down to one. One plus one is two. Dash, 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 dash. And then J goes down to zero. And is J greater than or equal to zero? Is the question we had to ask now. Yes. Zero is greater than or equal to zero, so therefore we have zero plus one, which will give me one dash, because I have to put zero plus one here, right? And then that will go across to now saying star there, and then dash, 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 there. And now, J is going to become minus one. And now that J becomes minus one, the while loop will no longer be able to execute because J is no longer greater than or equal to zero. So now we deal with the for loop now. 4j is 1 to size plus 1. 4j is 1 to size never change from 10. So there's 10 plus 1. So j is 1 to 11. So we're going to do something 11 times because there's a for loop that's going to go 11 times. Print a star. So we're going to start 11 stars 1. And just like that, we have a right angle triangle. All right. And then the last part of this question. Um, it's to write an algorithm that uses repetition to find the sum of all the multiples between 7 and 14 inclusive. Right. So when it says the sum of all the multiples between 7 and 14, it could be taken that they want the sum of all the multiples of 7 and the multiples of 14, or they want the sum of the multiples of 7 and 14. So I will do it in the way that it is read. So you're basically creating a for loop for C is equal to 14 to... 126 that is inclusive um and we want to say if c mod 7 mod 7 is equal to 0 then sum is equal to sum plus c end of end for 